So this is all there is. This is the formless in form. This is the empty fullness. It's the boundless energy, which is nothing being everything, simultaneously. This is all there is. And it's completely free. That boundless energy is totally free. It has no authority. There is no authority over it. It is without authority. It is without purpose. It is without meaning. It simply is what it is. And it basically, it, it simply uh, is everything that is. And it's completely beyond the idea, for instance, of the need for consciousness or awareness or knowing. It's free, it's free-floating, it's wild, it's chaotic. And also, it is uh, the consummate magician, because the, free, the boundless energy can be anything. It can move faster than light and be totally empty, simultaneously. And it can also arise as a contracted energy. It can be anything it likes, so it can arise as a contracted energy. And that contracted energy in the human physiology arises as a sense of separation. A separation, a sense of separation becomes embodied in the human physiology. It's not a thought or an idea. It's beyond those things. It's, it's embodied as an energy. And when that energy arises, what arises with it is a sense of identity. Suddenly, there is someone. There's an I, a self, a me arises. And it arises in an artificial reality. It arises in a reality which is totally finite. It's only finite. It's a reality which uh, only embraces subject and object. It's a subject-object reality. It's a dualistic reality. And me, the I, the self, lives in that reality. It can only exist in that reality. That's how it exists. It exists by knowing itself. It knows itself through self-consciousness. It becomes conscious of itself and believes in some way or other that it is real. I am real. The me grows up with lots of other me's, obviously. And the more it grows up with lots of other apparent me's, the more it becomes convinced that it is real. And not only is it real, I am real, I exist, I know I exist, also comes along with that I know that nothing can arise except in my experience. It even goes into that sort of belief as well, out of a sense of separation. But the feeling of, of, of unreality, or the feeling of, of being real, sorry, in, in that reality, brings with it also a sense of having free will and choice. So the me feels it is real, and it feels it has a real sense of uh, free will and choice. And also, it feels that it's in a story that is real, in time. It also becomes convinced that it can influence that story. The only thing about that whole sense of living in a separate subject-object reality is that actually it's deeply unsatisfying. Many people live in that reality and don't necessarily aren't sensitive enough to realize that they feel unsatisfied. But for people who are sensitive, there's a sense of something missing, and there's a sense of something lost. Because everything that's experienced is, is experienced as a separate object. Everything that appears or happens, feelings even, but certainly trees, the sky, other people, everything that arises in that experience seems to be separate, and that's deeply dissatisfying. So seeking begins at a deeper level. Of course, everybody that lives in that separate reality is actually a seeker, but the, for the more sensitive, there's a deeper seeking to find something called, let's say, fulfillment. Because, they don't, because people who are sensitive don't feel fulfilled 
in that separate um, reality. People look for fulfillment in religion or therapy or something called enlightenment. But because they, they live in the reality where they think they have free will and choice, they think they have to find that fulfillment. And because they live in what seems to be real time, in a, in a finite world where there seems to be a succession of things happening, then they also look for something happening called, let's say, enlightenment. So they think that they have to learn how to become enlightened. And so they go and find a teacher who is in the same dream, in dream reality, because the, the, the teacher that teaches somebody how to become enlightened is still living in that reality, in that subject-object reality, and believes that they have found something called enlightenment, like an object. And so they try to help other people find the same thing. And so the seeker goes on a journey and, and goes into a process about becoming enlightened or whatever you like, becoming self-fulfilled. But the whole nature of that reality is finite. It's a subject-object reality. And so what the seeker is looking for in the finite reality is actually, in the end, the infinite. And the seeker cannot find the infinite in the finite. So the whole effort of seeking fulfillment is wonderfully futile. <laughs> and in some way or other, um, the whole effort for me to find fulfillment somehow makes me just bigger and bigger and bigger. And the whole sense of separation becomes more and more reinforced by that effort to find something that is beyond the seeker's um, experience, because it's a finite, it's an infinite energy, and the seeker can only experience itself and its reality in the finite. So all seeking for personal enlightenment or personal um, fulfilment is like trying to catch the air with a butterfly net. It's, it's a completely futile uh, happening. So we can talk about this. The open secret exposes that, or what it sees as that misconception of there being something called a seeker that can find something else called enlightenment, and exposes it and sees it as a dualistic uh, viewpoint, a dualistic perception. And, and so in the meetings, we share concepts together, ideas about this, because there are ideas about the nature of me and the nature of the world, we share those, and it's possible that in some way or other, another way, another perception can be understood. It's possible. But that's, that, that simply is what happens with words, with the exchange of words. And clarity is not freedom. Freedom is the sudden dissipation, the sudden vanishing of that energy which feels as though it's real, and it feels as though it's living in its own reality, and it feels as though it can find something. Seeking liberation, freedom, is the end of the energy of seeking. It suddenly can vanish. It can suddenly be, no, be there no more. And all that's left is unknowable. What's left when the seeker collapses or vanishes is completely unknowable. It can't be described. But you could say in words, that all that's left when the seeking ends is that which is what is already free-flowing, unbridled, unbounded energy.
nothing else to do except sit and wait. <coughs> no, the me can't sit and wait. Uh, no, this is, uh, um, Tony, there isn't anything um, else to do but yes. sit and wait because me can't sit and wait. Me lives in a moving, finite reality. It's an artificial, dreamt reality in which it's continually moving to the next happening. Me lives in what will be or what could be and, and not in what is. <laughs> so it's continuously moving forward. So... Th th there's no suggestion here that me can sit and wait, and there's absolutely no suggestion here that me can simply accept that it is separate or accept that it's at one. Me can't accept anything. Me's on the move all the time. Me, the I, the self, is constantly moving. The, the function, the nature of me is to seek. That's all it does. Does it have any purpose at all? Sorry? Does it have any purpose at all? There is no purpose in anything. Everything is completely without purpose, as I said at the beginning. All of this is simply no thing appearing as this. This is an appearance out of no thing, and this has no purpose or meaning at all. The only thing that looks for purpose and meaning in this is me. It want, me wants purpose and meaning. It wants to hope. It lives in hope and dreams for something that will be better never seeing that this is already fulfilled. This is the fulfilledness. How is it that so few... Uh, oh, sorry. <coughs> How is it that so few uh, people uh, see it the way you do or feel it the way well, you do? Well, they don't see it the way I do because there's nothing here that no, sees I'm it in any way. Yeah. I'm being pedantic, but there we are. <laughs> So there isn't anybody that sees this in the way no, that I, I do. Know. What seems to happen, and happen more and more, is that somehow the whole energy of seeking and the whole idea that the me has to seek begins to collapse. That even, even in sharing it in a conceptual way, that, that can begin to be undermined. But, uh, but essentially, uh, what, is, what, what happens in meeting is beyond words. Because... Uh, the whole seeking energy is absolutely a contracted energy. It's a contracted energy. It is, it is boundless energy appearing to be contracted. Then, the, then energetically, that, that contraction can melt back out into the boundless. So this isn't a question of somebody in the audience seeing what I'm talking about. This is nothing to do with any sort of understanding or belief or idea energetically there's something much more powerful going on in this room that's beyond the words we use but then i can never ask a question or you can never tell me but we just sit and wait which we don't because well if you feel you have to sit and wait that's another doing yeah th which we don't that's we can what talk I'm as saying. much yeah. as we like okay. or sit and wait it's all the same thing yeah, okay Nothing that the seeker does uh, brings them any nearer to that which is already yes. free. <laughs> Everything the seeker does is a sort of effective way of avoiding freedom. The seeker is desperately afraid of its own absence and it's the one thing it longs for. So when it hears this, it runs as fast as it can. M most people come to these meetings and immediately rush back to that which they think they can or dream that they can do um, and know, seeking. So if there's uh, nothing to gain or to look for, or uh, when you let go of everything... Uh, uh, no, you don't let go of anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just are, so... Um, <laughs> you aren't. <laughs> no, that's the trouble, you aren't. <laughs> You are that which wants to be are. You can't stop her. So, um... It's hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that I need to eat and I have to earn money. But there, if there is no longing to gain any, anything or where... How do you do that? <laughs> The biggest thing with this, with what's going on here, 
is that basically people want to be guided or taught how to find something for themselves. Spiritual seeking is just another form of materialism. Spiritual seeking is only... <laughs> is only grasping something for the me. What's being suggested here is that there's something beyond that, which can't be grasped, which can't be taught, which can't be shared, which can't even be given. But we need to earn money. Well, you don't really. <laughs> but, well, you do need to earn money to come to my meetings. That's very important. <laughs> I have to say to all of that, that all there is, is what happens. There is no one that can choose to earn money. Nobody's ever chosen to earn money because the whole idea that there is someone with free will and choice is an illusion. Earning money happens or it doesn't. If it doesn't happen, you just don't come to my meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want ra the rabble coming to my meetings who haven't got any money. Oh, no, I'm just... <laughs> so this is interesting because um, there is this, what you are talking about, and at the same time, we need to live. We have a life to live. Well, you think and you need to live. You, yeah, I have to go home, or I want to go home, or I'm going home, and there's a way I need to go home. Okay, so, so is it possible stuff, that you won't be do. going home? Is it possible there's no one sitting there? Is it possible that actually that will get up and walk out of here and get in a car and go home, and there won't be anybody doing it? It'll just be what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in this room right now. There isn't anybody in here. There's nobody sitting here fidgeting or sitting here and thinking what a load of crap this is. The, the, all there is in this room is what's happening. So... There's just what's happening. Sitting on a seat, hearing noises, feeling warm. Nobody's doing it. And at the same time... <laughs> yeah, quite while you're ahead. Yeah. You can stop. You can echt stop. Okay. He needs a mic. Uh, this is not meant to be uh, in in any way uh, playing a devil's advocate, or. Um, oh, do I like it? Uh, yeah. So when you said that there is no purpose, and uh, forgive me, but I felt a little bit. And this is my impression is that the picture of uh, seeking process that you've uh, briefly sketched is a bit uh, black and white, uh, to my own experience. Like a, a... A bit of a narrow definition of what seeking really is. Ah, and so I apologize if uh, that was not your intention, but this is how I perceived it at this moment in time. Right. So my, my question, it's not rather a question, but something that I'm relating back to you, because um, um, I'm obviously very much... Um, in tune and uh, let's say in conjunction with what you're saying in terms of that uh, the collapse of the knower the collapse of the observer into what is being observed or you know the collapse of the mm. that aspect of consciousness which is known for uh, you know like uh, the subject the object and you forgot to mention the process of, process of experiencing because okay. subject does not exist in relation yeah. to object unless there is experiencing. Absolutely, and yeah. in the story, there is an experiencer. That's right. When that, when that, that, that collapses, me colla when me collapses, yeah. no, there's no longer an yeah. experiencer. The, the very tenets of there's no enlightenment because the subject, there's no one to enjoy the enlightenment oh, no. because the individual Nobody simply drowned. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am with that, and it's very, very much lived uh, kind of experience here, but I wanted to say that just something that prompted me, moved me to, to speak up is that the message that you've communicated with a very kind of like a great ease is that there is no purpose and it has no meaning. And that um, somehow, somehow, also that it's absolutely nothing. And everything. No, no, okay, yes. Everything it's nothing and, nothing and everything. That's right. Simultaneously. That's right. Simultaneously, absolutely. It's absolute silence and absolute dynamism. And there's no distinction between the two. Because until up, up until there's a distinction, obviously, we know that's not it. 
what I wanted to um, say is that in my experience, in my experience, there is this bubbling sense of joy. I don't even want to say joy because the word joy cannot describe it. One can say the word bliss or ananda, if you prefer, or any other word in any other language, but I, I understand where you particularly come from. The words simply are short definitions of that state which they're trying to convey. And I'm with that agreement. So this is what I wanted to say, is that perhaps there are, very, there are different degrees, different degrees of experience where within that, within that collapse of the subject-object relationship, there is still a possibility to experience joy. Not the human joy of good, bad, I'm feeling good, somebody gave me something. Or I'm not talking about that, and I'm sure you understand that what I'm talking about is that yeah. unconditional, absolutely, sense of bubbling gratitude of what have you, whatever you call Does it. Does that have to have a purpose? No, it doesn't have a purpose. Oh. However, if we go back to the purpose, you are here yourself. No, I'm not, no. No, okay, you are, you are not here, no. but... You know, like it's not taking place, it's nowhere and nowhere, and, and, and you know, no here. However, however, to say there's no purpose, this is another thing that prompted me to speak. Because okay, in so my experience. So, just let's get to the point. What is the problem with you and no purpose? I don't have a problem with that. As I oh. said, it's not much of a question. It's more like relating back to what I've just heard. It's not a problem because, like, how can that be a problem? You know, purpose or no purpose. It's like a, I could say that that's an attitude of the mind. What I'm trying to say here, in relation to what you've just shared, is that um, I feel that with the experience of that inner b rising sense of joy, and it, it's not rising in order to, for, you know, you can say that what's the purpose of okay, that joy? Okay, so there's an arising sense of joy, so what? Okay. <laughs> That's what's happening. Well, so what I'm saying is that perhaps, perhaps, maybe, maybe, and I'm not being... Um, I'm not trying to, as I said, I'm not trying to play a devil's advocate, is there is a possibility that in Tony Parsons, somehow, the transition, transition towards that joyful experience has not been reached, or perhaps oh, has not no, been actualized? Uh, it definitely hasn't been reached, because there's nothing here that has a joyful experience. Is okay. that all right for you? So, and, and the, in which case, I will suggest that there is a purpose, and that purpose oh. is a simple expansion of joy. Right. It's an expansion of happiness. Okay, thank you. So this, this what I felt... <laughs> well, thank I was you. waiting long enough, you know, like, so shall, shall I cut it down? And yeah, it's fine, thank you very much. Cut it down. That's what's okay. happening there. Yeah. That's what's happening there is a sense of joy should okay. be there, yeah. Thank you. In your introduction, uh, you were referring to, you, ma you made a distinction which, which caught my interest. Uh, and that is, you're talking about freedom, it's something different from clarity. And I would like you to talk a little bit more well, so about Clarity it. Is, an, is an understanding or comprehension of a construct. You can be clear, understand how to build a motor car engine, or you could be clear about the open secret message which tries to describe or expose the, the um, illusion of the idea that there is a seeker who can find something else through its own effort called enlightenment. You could understand that. that cl that's clarity, that's understanding that the open secret is saying that that is an illusion and, why, and how that illusion comes about because of what I described in my introduction. That's an understanding. I know dozens of people who come to my meetings who could write this down for you in two minutes. They understand it, but they are still a me now with an understanding that me is an illusion. That is not freedom. That's still a concept. It's just words. It's just an idea. Freedom isn't about an idea. It's not about the release of a thought or an idea or a change of a belief system. It's about an energetic shift, or an apparently energetic shift, out of a contracted sense of being separate into boundlessness. Nothing, nothing that's understood. No, a million concepts will never bring that about. It's energetic. Separation is an energetic, embodied, it's felt in the whole body. It comes and goes, every night it goes, 
but it's there a lot of the day. And that's, that sense of being contracted and separate suddenly collapses. For no reason at all, of course. Because, of course, when that collapses, there's a recognition that that collapse was the end, it, that, that, that collapse of apparent seeking and apparent seeking is simply the end of something that was never happening. Can, can, the, um, can the not you describe how it was that you became the not you? I mean, the former you that was contracted... I didn't contracted. become anything. There was somebody called Tony Parsons, who was a crap seeker. <laughs> <laughs> and always felt, when he was involved in self-inquiry, meditation, all those things, always felt somewhere that that was missing the point. There was always a sense somewhere that what he really... What, was really longed for was absolutely beyond Tony Parsons. It was about the death, the end. And this is about the death, the end of, of that energy of being me, being I, doing this, doing that. It's about the complete collapse of that. So Tony Parsons went along and did these things half-heartedly and didn't really believe in them. And then suddenly one day, there was no Tony Parsons. There was only what is. So nothing, very simple, nothing and it was very ordinary. It wasn't blissful. It was very simple, very ordinary, very... But very free. Everything was free. The carpets were free, the sky was free, bodies were free. There was just... <laughs> there was just that. What is? It can't be described. It's, being, it's falling in love, but nobody falls in love. It's just falling in love with this. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. So there was a kind of surrender, I guess. Is no. No, nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, there always has to be something. Me always has... Oh, it's surrender. No, it's, uh, uh, it's acceptance. No, it's self-inquiry. It's discovering who you are, isn't it? Oh, for God's sake, it's got nothing to do with me. That thing that wants an answer just dies. And what's left? Everything. Everything. Hello. Intuitively, my, my intuitive body uh, grasps and understands what, what you are saying. <clears throat> but it, it seems like as you, as you are speaking and people are interacting, you can um, dismiss any concepts, <clears throat> but you, you always keep on referring to the to there is no freedom there but you, you keep on using the, f the freedom like uh, there is no freedom in uh, in the, the, the um, in the attachment to a concept <clears throat> mm. or, or, or but me still, is, still freedom free. still yeah. freedom is, is, is a concept <clears throat> so so I would ask I would like to ask you what what how would you convey Freedom. Oh, no, what do you mean by um, freedom? I can't just tell you. Okay. Words, words I, I did say at the beginning, words can't express this. It's, it's unknowable. So how could words describe freedom? How could words describe imp the, imp the apparent, the apparent so, imprisonment so of can, me? They can't. Can you use any other method of, of communication besides <laughs> no. words? So I can, can have a feeling of what... Uh, there is no need to communicate this. I can't communicate it to you because you are not there to communicate it to Forget it. It's over. So, any, any kind of dialogue we, we, we have? It's no, it's just. <laughs> but something else is happening here which is beyond dialogue. Okay, that, nothing, that, to do that's with me. nothing to do with me or anybody. It, look, look, what we long for is the loudest noise in this room. What we long for is con constantly singing to us in every way. Everything we feel, hear, and touch, and, and think, and feel, or, or whatever, is simply the beloved crying out to us and calling us to let go and just be in what is. Thank you. Okay. I think I've got to come to an end. So I was going to say, I'm in Amsterdam next week doing a... a well, I'm apparently in Amsterdam. I won't be, actually. <laughs> so there'll be, there'll be nobody in Amsterdam next weekend talking about, talking about nothing. <laughs> and I just want to say to you that 
you know, this can't be described. We're, we're trying to share concepts about something that's beyond understanding. But the only thing about this is that we're talking about something called what is. All there is, is what is. And it doesn't matter where you go, what you listen to, or what you do, you can go anywhere you like, you can never ever escape from what is, because what it all is, all the time, is what is, being what it is. So what you long for, what you long for, has never come and never gone away. What you long for will never ever leave you. It constantly speaks to you. Thank you.